This match is Core Practical 7 at A-level, so AS International Chemistry at Excel, but it's something that's uh, covered right across most A-level syllabuses. This is the oxidizing agent. I've prepared some already. This is 20 centimeters cubed of acidified potassium dichromate solution. And what I need to do for the first step is I need to cool this down in an ice water bath. I'm going to very carefully add this 20 centimeters cubed of acidified potassium dichromate solution to this 50 centimeters cubed pear shaped flask. And I'm gonna cool it down in an ice bath. And then while that's cooling down, I'm gonna set up a flask for distillation, keeping the flask in the ice bath. So I'm gonna add it right now, very slowly, so that I don't have any spillages whatsoever. Pop the stopper there. Now, what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to put it in my ice bath and let that uh, let that cool down. I'll just fill it up to here with water and I'll just wait um, a couple of minutes for for that to cool down. I'm going to now add some anti-bumping granules. If I was to try and attempt the distillation without the anti-bumping granules then what would happen would be that you would get large bubbles forming and the entire distillation apparatus would just shudder. So if you have large shudders, these can become quite loose. And if they become loose, any vapors that you have traveling through the apparatus could escape and you lose your, uh, lose your product. So these are inert, they don't react with any of the reactants that we're going to be using today. I'm going to measure out 1.5 centimeters cubed of my alcohol. So in the lab books, they use propan 1 ol, but today what I'm going to do is something slightly different. I'm going to use ethanol, which should work as well. It is a primary alcohol. So I'm going to measure 1.5 centimeters cubed of this ethanol into uh, this beaker over here. And I've pre-measured some distilled water. I'm going to use five centimeters cubed of distilled water. And I'm going to then be able to use this syringe to add the ethanol very, very slowly to my potassium dichromate. Now I'm going to set it all up so that the reaction can subside after each addition before I add more. So this measures one centimeters cubed at a time. So I'm going to just start off with one and then go for half. Okay. Top it up with five centimeters cubed of distilled water. And I'm now going to add very slowly using my syringe the ethanol solution. So what I've now done is I've removed the ice water bath and I allowed the pear shaped flask to warm to room temperature, which took around about five minutes. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to light a burner underneath the flask and heat very gently with a small flame. Now this pear shaped flask is connected to a still head, which has a thermometer connected to it so I can measure any boiling point of the vapors that are condensing. This is then connected to a condenser here which I hope will cool down any vapors. The water will come up this side and fill upwards due to uh, gravity pulling the water downwards and the warmer water will come out over here. I've got a water bath over here just to try and collect any of the volatile liquid and I'm hoping it will be colorless and I will switch the condenser on now. So you can see water filling up that in next to no time. So that's filling up a whole jacket around the glass tube. It's connected over here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the burner and use a gentle flame to start the process.
Right, okay, so we get some of the uh, aldehyde. Just a little bit, careful with these. Okay. okay, so here's the test tube. So we've got Kathy, uh, say hi, Kathy. <laughs> and uh, Kathy's prepared some Tollens reagent, but we've only got about 27 minutes to do this before this could potentially explode, so we're going we're gonna to be quite fast with it. And we're going to put some of this aldehyde into there, and we're going to see what happens. So, um, go ahead. So do I just pour it? Uh, you can just extract it. Like that? Yeah, just squeeze some, of, squeeze some using that. Uh, there we go. So this isn't long enough. There we go. We make sure it is. Okay. Sorry, I think it's the bone. Okay, we've got some. We've got some. Is it doing it? Nothing's happening. Nothing's so. happening. Appear. Appears that nothing is happening. Oh. Okay, so it's definitely getting darker. You can see it against the uh, the table. Okay. Definitely something happening. So goes black is certainly an observation. It could potentially say that there is a precipitate at the bottom. Oh, that's very black. Okay. But it's what's forming here that's very interesting. Can you see anything? Yeah, yeah the, the silver on the walls. Silver. So it's like a mirror. Hence the name, silver mirror test. So this is confirmatory test that there is the aldehyde from our mixture. Very cool. Oh, this silver. So okay, so the idea is that you uh, add this to the mixture and you don't get a reaction. Okay, um, and the reason why you don't get a reaction is because there's nothing to neutralize the sodium bicarbonate. Uh, you, are, you are right, this is a quite a saturated solution. Just have a okay. Okay. So we're just eyeballing the solution. Okay, that's good enough. Right, so this is the aldehyde. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit to it. Now, hopefully, there is no fizzing. There is no fizzing, which is brilliant. That's good. That's good. That shows that the separation was successful, and all of that gentle, this was, these guys didn't see it, but what I was doing was I was <laughs> using ice mat just to make sure that everything was cooled down. It's a race, Latifa. I'm going to see who gets it first. You probably will get it first because your technique is on point. You're actually getting to that temperature quite quickly. You can actually see signs of a red precipitate. There it is. Ah. Okay, we're just starting up the reflux condenser. This is the Higher concentration uh, potassium dichromate uh, in acid. I've also put some anti-dumping granules inside. I've got around about two mils of the ethanol. I'm just going to pop it in to the top of the reflux condenser. Uh, the instructions suggest that we add a few drops at a time. So I'm just going to pour this into a uh, beaker and then We'll add a few drops at a time and hopefully start the reaction going, but not too vigorously. There we go. So you might get to see some uh, some steam coming out from the bottom. So let's have a look.
This is pretty. Okay, so this seems to have worked quite well. I've done the reflux for on and off about 45 minutes. And what I also did was I put a little beaker over here. This is a little innovation of mine, just in case anything shot up all the way uh, and uh, exited the uh, reflux. But nothing, nothing happened uh, to warrant any danger. So I'm just going to leave this and uh, then set up the next part, which is the uh, the distillation. So that was the reflux. The reflux was there. This is the distillation. It's all ready and waiting. And the hair shape flask will go over here. And then we'll just run that uh, distillation. Hopefully we'll get some ethanoic acid. Okay, this is getting quite interesting now because the thermometer is actually reading the thermometer is actually reading a temperature that's well into the 90s. Uh, it's around about 93 at the moment. Now, if it was just ethanol that was coming off, it would not be hitting 93. So there is something new that's coming through and I'm hoping it will be the carboxylic acid. So I'm hoping that the ethanol has completely, uh, completely been removed. And there was just a little extra ethanol in there. Let's just see what our new product is. So at this stage, it is a little bit of struggle to get the ethanoic acid all the way across to, uh, to test, but I've done multiple tests with universal indicator paper on the liquid that's forming on the thermometer. I'm quite satisfied. Uh, these definitely smell of vinegar, okay? Uh, I'm just going to see whether I can push it a little bit more to do some tests uh, with sodium bicarbonate solution and also with magnesium. Once I've done that, if both of those fizz, then I have an affirmative, uh, affirmative observation that it is indeed an atom. So I can smell it, I can see it, but I need to be able to test it. So I'll keep going. Okay, so uh, just give this, give this sample a try. Uh, here's the magnesium. I'm just gonna pop that in. No problem just popping it in actually. There we go. And you can see it's fizzing. I'll just zoom in there. Uh, what's great about it is that it's actually taking uh, the layer of um, residue off the magnesium. So it's making it really nice and shiny and clean. Can you see that? Yeah. So you won't get this with the aldehyde. Okay, so if the ethanol was added to magnesium, you would not get any fizzing. And my assistant here, Latifa, who is going to add the so whoa, uh, the sodium bicarbonate, and we've got fizzing. There it is. 